Okay, so I was struggling forever with understanding the base system and the base table that is in number notation. It's the third page of your charts. And I was really struggling. And finally, I feel like I kind of understand it. I have it down and I want to try to explain it in a way hopefully that makes sense to you because it is a super simple explanation. So let's start with the number 342. Okay, so if I said, what is the place value or what what column, what place is the two in? You could kind of divide this out and you would tell me that the two is part of the ones column, the four is part of a tens column, and the three is part of the hundreds. Okay, so you're probably familiar with this. 342 is the same as saying you have two ones, four tens, and three hundreds, right? You have that down because you're used to base 10. Base 10 is what we think of for most things. Um, most of the time in our math, we're using base 10. And so um, let's explain a little bit more about how base 10 works. So this first column includes the ones. The second column has the tens. I'm sorry, my camera keeps going out of focus when my hand works. And then the next column, we have 100. Okay. And um, the one is the same as saying 10 with an exponent of zero. This 10 column is the same as 10 when the exponent is one. And this column is 10 when the exponent is two. Same thing if we come down, this is the whole part. If we come down to the fractional part, this column back here is the same as one over 10. This is of course then one over a hundred for the hundredths. And this is the same as saying 10 with negative one index. And this is 10 with negative two index. Okay, so we accept this. We understand this. Maybe you've never thought of it by having the exponents and, and writing it out this way, but you definitely understand this because you understood the example up here. So if I write a number in here, if I say the number 748, I have eight ones, I have four on my tens, and I have seven in my hundred. Okay, what numbers could possibly go in this box right here? I could have 10 possibilities. And I know I have 10 possibilities because this is base 10. And this number says how many possibilities I have. They work out. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I wouldn't have a 10 written in here because by the time I get to 10, that means I'm going to make a mark in this column and a zero in this column. So 10 would be written one and a zero over here, right? Right, so this will never have a 10 in it, which is why we only go from zero to nine on that column. Um, so if I did 10, it'd be like this. And I want to add one more number just to give an example because I'm going to use it in my next system, and that's the number 5. Okay, so that value is 5. I'm going to write it in as the word 5. In base 10, 5 looks like this. 5 is 5. But guess what? 5 is not always 5. Okay, let's talk about another base system for my example. Now I'm going to talk about base 2, and I'll expand up so you can kind of see base 10 in comparison to base 2. I still have a one here, so let's put my, let's do my two down here. Two with an exponent of zero. That's going to equal one, right? Anything with the exponent of zero is one. Over here we have two with an exponent of one, gives me two. Over here we'll have two, exponent of two, that becomes four, and so on. You could go on and do an eight. Over here, what did I do? Remember, we have two and it's negative one is my exponent. So that's the same as having one over two. And this is two with an exponent of negative two, which is the same as one over four. Okay, so now in this case, um, let's take the number five again, because we talked about five. So we have five. Five, I can't just put a five here in one because I can only have one. I can only have two digits in base two. 
my two digits are zero or one. That's it, I can only have two digits. So I can't put a five in here. I can actually, I could go into two, but nope, I can go all the way to four. Okay, that's my highest value I can go to. How many fours are in five? There is one four and four is not quite five, you would need one more. So four and one equals five. You don't have any twos in that case. Okay, so five is the same as having one four and one one. If I did, um, let's do uh, six for another example. Okay, so I could have one four and what do I have remaining? Six minus four is going to have two. I will still have a two remaining. So I have one of these and then I don't have any ones. So one, one, zero. And five was one, zero, one. So if I were to write out five in base 10, five equals five. We saw that up here. But on base two, five equals one, zero, one. One, zero, one. Okay? And so when you're, they're doing their math problems, on their number notation for the week. You can look on here and you know this one is equivalent to the ones column. On base two, this is equivalent to two. This column is going to be equivalent to, to two to the third. And so you're going to be able to figure out what those numbers are from there. And I think they only go to base two. Base two is also called binary. And it's what computers use. So computers can only be programmed to know that something is off or on. No or yes, there's, there's only two absolutes, you know, yes, no, on, off. They can't think anything else above that. They're not smart enough. So everything has to just be in digits of one or zero. It's either on or off. And so they will have these huge string of things where you'll have numbers. And if you've ever seen stuff written for computers, it'll look kind of like this. And each one of these things is called a bit. And when you have four, five, six, seven, eight, when you have eight bits together, that is called one byte. Okay, eight bits is one byte. So in binary, we can group things by eight when we're doing things. In base 10, we actually group things and um, into sets of three, and that's called a period. So sets of three are called a period, and then we separate it by a comma. In other base systems, base six, base three, we're not going to do any sort of marks like that. You still have a point. So um, this point is called a decimal point in base 10. In base two, or any of the other bases, we call it the radix point. Radix, and only in base 10 do we call it the decimal point. So radix in all the systems, decimal is a special thing for base 10. Okay, so there you go. Now you understand base systems. You can kind of see how they work. You see how the system, you're very familiar with base 10 works, and then you can understand other base systems. If I asked you base 3 how many possible digits are there in base three? Well, base 10 had 10 possibles. Base two has two possible digits. So how many do you think base three has? Three, zero, one, and two. And that is the only thing that could fill in their columns because you would have one, three, six, nine, and so on. And so you would never get above a, of a two in any other column because then you're jumping up to the next column. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. This was really confusing for me forever, but now I feel like I finally get um, understand it, and so hopefully this helped you.